Okay, let's come back to our uh, simple atmosphere model and try to figure out the feedbacks, uh, water vapor feedback, cloud feedback, and ice albedo feedback, which is fairly straightforward. It's basically extensions of what uh, we talked about. So we still have our system with uh, solar radiation coming in, getting absorbed in the atmosphere and reaching the surface after 31% is reflected and we are going to increase the greenhouse gases so trap more of the outgoing long wave radiation from the surface uh, which reduces the outgoing long wave to space which means the atmosphere has to adjust and emit more as before. So uh, atmospheric temperature and uh, so here add to uh, uh, surface uh, trapping uh, here um, and what we are going to do now is to look at how water vapor will respond. Obviously, uh, atmospheric temperature has to warm up to increase its outgoing long wave radiation to compensate for reduced atmospheric emissivity because of greenhouse gases. And warmer atmosphere is going to uh, add to IR, but also it's going to increase uh, water vapor. So I downward uh, atmospheric OLR is going to increase, which means surface is going to warm a little bit more, increase the surface long wave radiation. Uh, so reduce uh, the, uh, uh, it has to uh, balance the uh, additional uh, downwelling uh, long wave radiation from the surface. So warmer air is going to hold more moisture. I'm trying to follow this numbering convention uh, David Nealon uses, but I think you get the idea that increasing greenhouse gases warm the atmos warms the atmosphere and the surface, but then amplification comes from increased moisture because of a warmer atmosphere, which then allows the atmosphere to adjust and balance for uh, the uh, reduced short wave, uh, a reduced long wave from the surface. So when we did this before without the water vapor, uh, the atmospheric temperature would have to do all the work to increase the uh, outgoing long wave to compensate for this. But if you add moisture, that's going to give you some added warming. Uh, net result is still to warm the atmospheric emission temperature, but you are, uh, have an amplification uh, within it now. Okay, so water vapor to remind ourselves uh, as a measured uh, as measured by vapor pressure versus temperature, schematizing how water vapor might increase in a global warming. So in global warming, the figure we looked at before, you are going to go from uh, what is uh, the counterfactual world or a normal world and you're going to increase the atmospheric temperature uh, so on this curve of uh, mean uh, uh, atmospheric relative humidity let's say of 65 percent uh, the range here is going to be in this uh, 65 to 85 percent range but now you have moved to a warmer temperature so you have uh, relative humidity going again 65 to 85 uh, which is uh, the same range here um, so the solid curve is the saturation value for, uh, of uh, vapor pressure as a function of temperature. Condensation would occur in an air parcel with initial vapor and temperature values uh, on this side. An air parcel might have uh, any combination of temperature and vapor pressure corresponding to a point uh, below this curve because typically the atmosphere never really reaches saturation. When it does, it rains out and dries up again. A fra the fraction of the saturation value at a given temperature is the relative humidity. We know that QA specific humidity divided by saturation specific humidity. Dashed curves show vapor pressure values as a function of temperature for 85% and 65% relative uh, humidity. So as uh, temperature increases, uh, you still have an exponential shape uh, to the relative humidity as well because both specific humidity and saturation humidity increase. Um, atmospheric values of water vapor quite commonly fall between these lines. For a particular latitude and height, the arrow marked normal indicates the typical range of vapor pressure in the normal climate. After glo global warming, if the relative humidity remains in the same range, 
the arrow marked warmer shows the range of vapor pressure uh, in warm climate. So you can see that the distance between these two relative humidity curves is increasing uh, towards warmer temperature. So obviously the uh, uh, relative humidity, sorry, specific humidity or water vapor is going to uh, increase as well, which is what we often invoke for uh, more extreme events, stronger cyclones, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> the next feedback is the snow ice feedback. Uh, so again, same thing, short wave, uh, trying to balance increased greenhouse gases. In this case, again, atmosphere has to warm to balance the uh, reduced output here. But uh, typically, uh, s uh, increase in uh, land ice or snow uh, or sea ice is going to increase the albedo so that's going to increase the uh, uh, if you reduce with the warming if you reduce snow and ice you're going to reduce the uh, albedo so you're going to uh, reflect less of the solar energy coming in which means you're going to add more to the surface potentially uh, uh, warming the surface uh, let's assume that the atmosphere is not changing other than that we have reduced the snow and ice because of increased greenhouse gases so now uh, IR atmosphere has to increase again to balance increased solar input so here we are still trapping some of the outgoing uh, long wave from the surface but the surface itself is receiving more a short wave because of reduced albedo could be ocean or land uh, and that means uh, surface warming is going to happen initially from the greenhouse effect and then additional warming is going to come from uh, reduced albedo and increased uh, solar radiation being uh, kept in the system as opposed to being reflected by the albedo so there is an adjustment again uh, in terms of warming atmosphere uh, in this case uh, finally uh, I think that's the no we have one more uh, maybe I should stop here and then come back uh, to the other two feedbacks in the next podcast uh, let's keep going this is still not long enough so <laughs> on the fly adjustment okay so what happens with cloud feedbacks we have uh, albedo changes obviously going to be induced by the clouds as well so let's assume that we are uh, receiving solar so schematic of uh, cloud amounts effects of cloud amount in the global energy balance the feedback depends on whether the cloud fraction increases for a given cloud type uh, the figure, this figure shows cases of increased deep cloud fraction and low cloud fraction. Solar effects are shown on the left, on the left of the cloud here, and infrared effects on the right of the cloud. So, clouds can have short wave forcing and long wave forcing depending on whether they are absorbing more solar and or increasing cloud top uh, uh, albedo and uh, uh, reflection of uh, solar and whether they are absorbing outgoing long wave uh, or uh, reducing depending on uh, the type of cloud okay let me put on the uh, laser pointer um, if cloud fraction increases in a warmer climate solar effects give a negative feedback so on the whole clouds end up reducing uh, the energy in the system while IR effects give a positive feedback so more solar energy will be lost but more will be trapped uh, of the outgoing long wave for deep clouds these effects are smaller similar in magnitude for low clouds the IR effects are smaller because the cloud top temperature is closer to the surface temperature uh, so IR emitted from the cloud top is not changed as significantly. The net message I will give first is that the there is a large uncertainty in uh, what's happening in the real world in terms of cloud feedbacks. Best use of the satellite seems to argue that clouds are amplifying or they are uh, trapping more outgoing long wave and adding to global warming but this is there's a large uncertainty in that so increased reflection of solar by clouds is going to uh, in, uh, uh, increase the albedo effect okay so that's for the high clouds so that will be a cooling tendency but 
if the increased IR absorption by the clouds actually uh, reduces the uh, colder uh, temperatures at the cloud top then sigma t to the fourth is going to be smaller so warming tendency is going to increase um, and the net cooling effect of low clouds is related to the fact that they are uh, have they have more of an impact on albedo and uh, reflection of the solar radiation so less is reaching to the surface uh, there is a IR effect but the IR emission to the surface uh, change is not uh, very large so the IR effect is smaller than the uh, increased albedo effect so they can have a net cooling tendency. There are also high thin clouds which allow solar, uh, solar radiation to come in but trap the outgoing long wave so they have a warming effect as well. So there's a large range of pot potential cloud feedbacks and as I said we don't know whether the net effect so far has been positive or negative with some uh, evidence that it's been positive but we definitely don't know what will happen in the future because models are notoriously bad in capturing the clouds, cloud variability, cloud response to aerosols, cloud response to greenhouse gases, land use change and so on and so forth. Okay, So this is the schematic of cloud top feedback. Uh, in the normal conditions uh, where there is no increased greenhouse gases you have uh, uh, clouds absorbing solar uh, long wave radiation from the surface and sending some uh, long wave back and sending long wave out to space as well depending on the cloud top temperatures uh, whereas in the warmer world this continues IR emitted from higher cloud tops at colder levels is uh, less than IR emitted from lower cloud top so the main effect we are seeing with warming increased evaporation, increased water holding capacity and so on uh, are that the cloud tops are increasing in altitude every time that happens there is a feedback within the system which drives vertical motion takes the clouds to the uh, upper level but the remarkable thing is that the background stratification or uh, lapse rate remains almost the same uh, so the cloud top temperatures tend to be colder if the cloud is higher which means sigma t to the fourth is lower so the IR emitted is lesser in a warmer world for uh, high cloud for uh, deep clouds uh, compared to the normal where we don't have uh, a uh, greenhouse warming okay so I hope it's clear water vapor feedback definitely positive uh, ice albedo feedback definitely positive cloud feedback could be positive or negative right now it's uncertain okay